There are many different types of sewing machines, or sewing devices, if you will. Um, from the earliest times, the sewing machine tried to imitate hand sewing. And so you would have machines that did uh, different kinds of stitches. So one way to classify sewing machines is by the type of stitch that they make. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. The four types of stitch formation include the chain stitch, the lock stitch, the overlock stitch, and the embroidery stitch. The stitch is simply formed by penetrating through the fabric with the needle and then just kind of looping the uh, loop to the next stitch so that the needle comes down, picks it up, and you form a chain. Here's a typical chain stitch machine. Notice that on this machine there is no bobbin, there is no bobbin carrier, there's no lower thread whatsoever. Just a single thread comes down and the finger in the center there moves the loop to form the chain. Many of the more modern machines that do the chain stitch use multiple threads as illustrated here with the double chain stitch and here is a typical example of a chain stitch sewing machine. The lock stitch sewing machine uh, is more common and probably 90% of all the sewing machines uh, are lock stitch machines. First invented in 1846, the lock stitch basically has an upper thread and a lower thread. The upper thread is driven through the fabric with a needle, wraps around the lower thread and tightens as the needle bar comes up to form a knot or a lock stitch inside the fabric, as illustrated here. With the invention of the locked stitch, the number and variety of different stitches expanded exponentially, from straight stitch to zigzag to satin stitch to feather stitches and blind hem stitches to decorative stitches to well over a thousand different kinds of locked stitches. This capability gives tremendous variety. The overlock stitch uses a set of stitch fingers to guide the threads uh, and lay them over the edge of a fabric to create an overlap stitch like you see here. You can see a multitude of different combinations uh, depending on how many threads and the design of the stitch. You may have two threads all the way up to eight threads or more in an overlock stitch. Basically just remember that the overlock goes over the edge. As you see here, you seam the thread, the edge of the fabric, you cover the edges and you trim the fabric all in one pass. Finally you have machines that do embroidery stitches. Embroidery stitches basically are computer generated uh, thread art. And in these thread art designs or motifs, you have almost an endless variety of pictures, letters, uh, combinations that can be formed just like painting with thread. In the pictures you see here, uh, you just see a couple of quick uh, examples of such designs. The fundamental thing to remember is that embroidery machines use computerized patterns to control the positioning of this fabric and it's being moved uh, back and forth in different directions to create the motifs and elaborate designs. As you can see here, the machine automatically operates on a robotic arm where the fabric is moved and the needle uh, 
lock stitch simply continues as a normal straight stitch machine in the same position. Uh, you change colors and you change the, the color on the design and therefore you can come up with all kinds of beautiful, creative, sewn items. When a technician first sees a sewing machine, they should be able to quickly and automatically identify the type of the machine and have an understanding of uh, how to work with that particular type of machine. The common ways to classify sewing machines include the stitch formation, the power system types, the hook design, and the bobbin insertion. And we will look at the other three in later videos. For more information on sewing machine repair, check out FixSewingMachines.com and the Fix Sewing Machines Institute, where you can learn sewing machine repair for fun or profit and learn as a professional sewing machine technician.